everyone welcome to my kitchen i was up super super early this morning because i have a massive preserving day planned i've already done one, two, five pints of mushrooms and five pints of delicious mushroom stock and four and a half pints of strawberry jam. The dehydrator behind me is full of celery. And in the canner behind me is nine pints of mince. So I'm gonna take those out and then show you how I quickly and easily can up mince for my pantry. It's super super simple these um, have just finished processing let the can come down drop pressure naturally oh this is so pretty and then let it sit wow. i like to let it sit for just a few minutes probably five ten minutes after it's come down oh. And then I take the lid off and pull the jars out. And oh my, there's been no siphoning. Oh, yes, I was a little concerned because I zipped outside to the clothesline and came back in and the pressure had dropped just a tad under what I normally like it to be. So, now, let me just dry off the bottom of this jar and I will bring it over and show you just how pretty this is. All right. Now, look at that. You see the bubbles happening, still bubbling up there. It's still really, really hot. Did you hear that ping then? Yes, that's a perfect sound. Love to hear the ping. Okay. These uh, two, four, six, eight, nine pints are going into my pantry. I've got another four kilos of mince here. I'm going to drop the camera down a little so that you can see what I'm doing. Really quick, really easy. Got a pressure canner. There is no reason why you cannot do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Okay, let's drop the camera down a bit. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to jiggle you. And there goes another, another pinger. All right, in my pot. Four kilos of mince. I have tried raw packing. I didn't quite like the texture when it came out of the jars when I was using it. <coughs> Excuse me, frog in my throat. Let's get a glass of water. It always happens when I'm recording, doesn't it? Is that better? It's a little better. Okay, so what I do is I put the four kilos of mince into my big pasta pot, cover it with cold water, put it on the gas, bring it up to a boil, let it simmer for five to ten minutes, depending on how busy I am, turn it off, drain it, and rinse it. My goal is to brown the meat enough that it releases the fat because I don't want fat in my jars. I don't like fatty meat. I always rinse the mince after I've browned it. But I also don't want fat in my jars. A little is okay, but too much. And you run the risk of it going rancid now this is cold it's been sitting for a while so it's going into cold jars and <clears throat> one inch headspace guys 
as we load it up. These are pint jars too, by the way, just in case anyone is wondering. And I'm using my handy dandy deep bubbler to just push it down into the jar. This one will probably have just a wincy bit more, but I'll go back through later. Okay, now, really easy. Now, this mince is $9.99 a kilo. So eight kilos came home with me um, simply because mince is a staple on our meal plan because it's versatile, guys. Um, really, really, oh, sorry for the noise. Really, really versatile. And eh, it used to be cheap. Now it's not so. Not so much these days, but it's really, really versatile. And having already cooked, ready to heat mince in your pantry saves so much time on busy nights. Okay, let's put it down. That one will have a little bit more. I've decided. Chicken there goes another pop. Love that popping sound. This is also shelf stable, and as you know, I am trying to get away from being freezer reliant for our food storage and our pantry. So, having shelf stable meat um, is you know, I don't have to worry about power outages in summer or winter. Sort of, like, yeah, you know, government keeps telling us, you know, we're going to have blackouts, we're going to have rolling blackouts, we're going to have power outages. Well, we can have them, and it won't bother me if I have a lot of shelf stable preserves. Okay. Now, I'm pushing it down and sort of debubbling as I go. Now, I will go back and debubble a bit more when I add the liquid because that's what you need to do. headspace. So we need to do just a little bit less. Right, so busy night, crack open a jar of mints, throw in a jar of tomatoes, some dehydrated onion, some basil, and some powdered tomato. And you've got pasta sauce in no time. And all you've got to do is heat it and it's ready to go in the time that the pasta takes to cook. I will need to get more jars. How exciting. And get more out of this. Woohoo! That's what I like to see. Maybe not. Have to use up that little bit for top ups, I think. All right, down we go. Now, it's fine for soups. You can make taco soup with this. You can make kaising min with this. You can make. Let's see. Add a little more to this one. Um, you can do curry with this. You can use it for pie filling if you want to make pies. 
You can use pie. Add gravy, veggies, and make pies. Don't waste the mince. It costs too much. Uh, to get a spoon for this next bit. All right, now. Cold mince in cold jars means it has to go into a cold canner. So I will empty the canner in a minute. And I will empty it into a jug because I don't want to waste the water. It's quite a bunch of water. So I'll put it in a jar and pour it over some plants. Okay, so what have I got? Ten, I think I've got there. Ten pints. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, ten pints. Cool. All right. Kettle has cold water in it. And I am going to fill it to the one inch headspace mark, which is this first line here. If you don't have a measure on your G bubbler, you can hear the bubbles. Oh, the losing air. That one can go in there. Now I'll come back through in a second and I will debubble again because there will be bubbles. There will be. There just is. And I will probably need to adjust the water. Now you can use stock. You could use tomato juice. You could use vegetable juice. Whatever you like. I use water because I never know what recipe I'm going to be making with my jar of mints until I open it. And some people will be screaming at me, but you didn't put the salt in. Well, folks, remember, I don't salt anything. Can you see all the bubbles coming up? There's still lots of bubbles. And the fluid has dropped just a bit. Just a little. So... Debubble, debubble, debubble. Okay. Debubble, debubble. Get it all in. Now. Um, we will be taking some of this away with us when we go away. simply because it's convenient. I don't have to worry about cooking. I just have to open it, tip it into a pot, add whatever we're having with it, and dinner is done. Perfect camp cooking. I don't mind cooking while we're away, but you know, it's my holiday too. Okay. That one needs a bit more water. Just drop. That one needs a bit more. How are these front ones looking? This one needs a bit more. Okay. All right. Now, trusty cloth and white vinegar to wipe the rims make sure they're really clean there is no grease on them it helps to use um, the wide mouth funnel so that the food goes in the jar and bypasses the rim but still wipe them better to be safe than sorry I say and I don't want any fails if I can possibly avoid them I do not want any fails now another thing is I have soaked the lids in um, hot water 
I know they say these days that you don't need to with these new lips. Personally, I think it helps with the because they are much thinner. The seal on the coating on them is much much thinner. I personally think that it helps them seal. Okay, rings on, finger touch. Do not need to do them up super duper tight. One for their finger touch. So you can lift it like that without it wobbling. to very quickly empty the can and refill it with cold water because cold meat in cold jars with cold water on them so cold water in the can and I will dip it into the pot I brown the mints in because I want to save that water Back over there, and it can go out to the garden. In a All right. on the stove. Jars go in the canner and there's 10 so I'm going to have to double stack it. That's okay. I will do five on the bottom and five on the top. My can has been used so much it actually has a mark on it so I just fill the water to the mark. I know how much water. <laughs> It takes. Okay. Alrighty. I wait till it starts to vent you will see or I will see a steady stream of steam coming out of there when I see that I set the timer for 10 minutes when it goes ding I put the weight on wait for it to come up to pressure which for our altitude is 10 pounds check with your altitude depending on where you are as to what the pressure is I will set the timer then when it's at pressure. I will set the timer for 75 minutes, one hour and 15 minutes. When it goes ding, turn the gas off and leave it. I will let it come down by itself, drop pressure by itself, wait a few minutes, 
take the weight off, open it up, take them out, take the 10 pints out and let them sit till well, probably tomorrow morning. They should be okay to go tonight, but I'll leave them till tomorrow morning when I will test them all to make sure they have all sealed, wash the jars, label the jars, and I just do that with a Sharpie. Let's see, I'll just show you. See, I just do it with a Sharpie, just like that. Nothing special. Um, and I didn't write what they are because I can see their mushrooms in the jar. Um, but I did write mushroom stock on here. Um, and once I've done that, they'll be ready to go in the cupboard. And I will have added 19 pints of mints to my pantry stockpile. And that will be a great relief to me because we really need to build the pantry and build it while we can within our thank you so much for watching if you'd like this idea or you like our channel or you like the show thumbs up please if you're not already subscribed please do because we are getting very close to drawing the winner of that sunbeam food lab dehydrator and you need to be subscribed to my channel to be in the running to win. And don't worry if you are not in Australia. We have that covered. So remember, like, subscribe and share because that helps spread the message that, you know, it's not only okay to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing, but you can still do it even in these crazy, super inflationary times that are 2022. Okay. I'll be back very, very soon with another cheapskates video for you. Till then, happy cheapskating and bye.